good afternoon. Good afternoon. So I was just going through this brochure and I found accidentally I'm the only engineer who is going to speak uh, out of 70 architects uh, who are going to make it to this uh, fantastic uh, festival of architects in Rajasthan. And I'm really uh, very happy that uh, I'm getting this opportunity. Uh, though I'm, I think we are running quite late today. Uh, I will be very quick and try to communicate uh, my experience uh, on doing some wonderful projects in Rajasthan specifically. Uh, but before that, uh, I'm very passionate about uh, sustainability. So friends, India is a beautiful and diverse country known for its vibrant cultural heritage, eye-catching architecture, gems and interesting landscape and there are total 40 UNESCO World Heritage Sites in India which includes uh, the majestic hill forts of Rajasthan and Chitorgarh, Kumbhalgarh, Ganthambur, uh, Gargan, Ambar, Jaisalmer and this pink, pink city of Jaipur uh, with the Royal Heritage Magnificent Architecture and Rich Culture was declared uh, cultural heritage site in 2019 and we saw excellent video yesterday thanks to all those who created this wonderful uh, video. So uh, heritage building enjoys the advantage of embodied energy having been built with uh, superior craftsmanship and materials that supports long physical life and they have been well designed in terms of passive technologies for cooling, heating, lighting, uh, ventilation, water harvesting and storage and according to UNESCO, uh, heritage is our legacy from the past, what we live today and what we pass on to the future generation. Uh, French heritage buildings typically have some inherent capability to moderate uh, external influences of, uh, on the interior conditions and this older structure, the, build, the building itself was the system for ventilation, human comfort, a variety of passive strategies were employed to enhance the movement of air within the building and by virtue of density difference in the air response to its temperature. The hydrothermal performance of this building relied upon building materials, thermal mass, moisture buffering, a green landscape, overall form of interior spaces and uh, exterior uh, wall openings. So heritage buildings have uh, various uh, passive cooling strategies uh, which has which has uh, thick walls that have high thermal mass, high ceilings, courtyards and verandas, solar shading devices such as jallies, canopies, uh, still and moving water for evaporative cooling, a natural ventilation by means of wind reduced or flow to cool the indoor along with the efficient daylighting and uh, water. And we all know that Taj, Taj Mahal uses number of passive cooling technologies that keep the interior parts of this uh, well lit area. And these are the jalis, huge dome walls with uh, high thermal mass. Uh, this is something which uh, is uh, radiating the entire energy to uh, Yamuna bed and keeping the structure cool. But uh, unfortunately, we have not uh, done any work in measuring how this energy is moving. And that is a pity where MEP consultants and architects have not talked to each other. We have documented them very separately. Uh, we all know Havamal in Jaipur has 953 win windows known as Jharokas that maintain air ventilation that keeps temperature low. Uh, but this, uh, this venturi effect and how, how this is happening is unfortunately again uh, not documented by all of us. Uh, we all know that uh, this uh, beautiful fort of uh, uh, Amir, uh, of course, has fantastic uh, uh, passive design strategies, uh, which includes uh, various elements such as hydraulic engineering, architect, architectural integration, and uh, detailed urban planning. We can see that uh, specifically when it is completely elaborated in the uh, underground chambers where multiple passive strategies uh, design elements can be found located as wind tunnels, water walls, ponds, cisterns, thermal mass and this is all done uh, 400 years back so uh, we have to really 
understand why we have not brought this into uh, our uh, regular projects. Uh, I belong to Indore, so uh, we are very uh, fortunate that this particular uh, plateau had some fantastic, incredible water management systems, uh, which, uh, which includes uh, several bowdies, uh, several channels, there are 1200 uh, small ponds completely integrated with each other. Uh, so friends, uh, when it comes to historic buildings and uh, are to be preserved and renovated and we saw some wonderful presentations earlier, the occupancy or integrated use is often changed from the original uh, which can require alteration of buildings. So in this particular situation, MEP systems are often redesigned either to accommodate the new building use or because the original systems have become, become so damaged or in, inefficient that the replacement is the best action. In many instances, a historic uh, renovation project will require new heating, cooling, uh, electrical, lighting and plumbing systems, but the design of these utilities is often restricted by the architectural and historic character defining features that should not be destroyed or damaged. So design of historic uh, preservation is therefore usually more complex than designing a new uh, building. Uh, with thick walls, multiple level complex layouts, hidden voids and complicated structure, heritage buildings were never designed initially to accommodate modern systems. Uh, a challenge which is common to historic buildings is the need to place devices in uh, inaccessible places where ensuring effective coverage and allowing for future maintenance. So old buildings have often neglected wiring. In many cases, installation can be done at uh, floor levels to facilitate the uh, uh, power flow. And, uh, of course, in the digital age, a uh, lot of challenges are coming up. The lighting, however, proves to be more problematic. Uh, and it is, uh, that is the, uh, and these systems inevitably means disrupting walls and ceiling and the very features that needs to be preserved. Electrical and air conditioning installations can also create aesthetic problems along with uh, uh, structural challenges. Each MEP system, uh, each MEP system has unique design challenges while renovating and preserving the historic building. The design problems can arise when a renovated heritage building would require more electrical load or power to supply additional electrical features. If supplementary electrical power is needed, then the new electrical system and equipment such as transformers, switchgears, panel boards might need to be redesigned and installed in the building. Routing additional conduits and making rooms for additional electrical equipment uh, can be designed challenge in working around the architectural uh, features. Firstly, in the, on the plumbing side, firstly many older buildings might not have fire separation system or fire rated walls which require which requires to be added as per the current building codes. So it is very difficult uh, to bring building up to the current fire safety codes uh, which, uh, while still maintaining the historic characteristics. Uh, if a new fire separation system is to be installed, it will usually require new piping and penetration in the structures. And when redesigning the plumbing piping consisting of hot water, hot water recirculation, uh, cold water, sanitary water and ventilation piping, uh, which, uh, which uh, when piping, which will all need to be coordinated with architectural features and structure. So, plumbing equipment such as pumps, hot water heaters, backflow preventers also will need to be allocated space in the building. The storm water drainage can pose one of the most difficult design issues if rooted within the building and it could be very difficult to integrate and coordinate the large storm water pipes which, uh, with existing MEP routing equipment and the historic character of the building. The, uh, on the mechanical side, the system often will be the most difficult for MEP system to design because it will require large sizes of equipment such as air handling units, chillers, boilers, 
and the mechanical system if located on the roof uh, can have to be uh, architecturally covered up uh, to keep the attractive appearance of the building. Uh, routing of ductwork can be an issue when not enough space is available in, in plenums or when original architectural features or thick walls inhibit uh, the design uh, routing location. In some instances, historic buildings might not have a central system then routing and required space will be also an issue because lack of provision of original design. So another common HVAC issue for historic structure is the change in humidity levels. This can cause damage to or deterioration of uh, materials also. Installing or up uh, upgrading HVAC system for historic building is not only the greatest challenge which involves balancing comfort, efficiency and preservation. Uh, as in each historical building is different and no type of HVAC system will work, no specific type of HVAC system will work. So water systems including hydronic radiated, radiation radiating system, fan coil units and radiant pipes have the advantage as pipes can have much smaller uh, diameter than HVAC fold air ducts and therefore easier to install. So there are a lot of uh, uh, projects where we are uh, using radiant system in, under the floor. Uh, water systems were however come with the risk of hidden leaks and burst, uh, both uh, of which can damage the surrounding areas to introduce moisture or uh, put de delicate collection. So this is a high risk uh, system, but it, it is a probable solution also. Uh, central air, air, air system allow for high degree of climate control and many can have their condensers located outside which may cause uh, severe damage to the structure appearance. Uh, we just now uh, seen what Chandigarh experience of uh, uh, Ms. Abba, I think she narrated her experience and this is, could be a, a very big challenge. So adopting modern mechanical system to historical building will need careful planning and coordination. Uh, we have done some uh, small duct systems offer a better solution. This is a special uh, system which which, uh, which is now currently available in the globe uh, where we use uh, two inches flexible tubes and this can be integrated with VRL system also and it can be integrated with the chill water system also. Uh, I will be showing you some good case studies of this. So no, what, no, no matter what type of HVAC system for historic building is selected, it should meet uh, uh, ease of service and maintenance, inclusion of humidity monitors and safety systems to protect collection, installed with future upgrades in mind, installed with structural limitation of the building and minimum level of vibration and noise and visual compatibility with the original architecture. Uh, small duct high velocity system uh, are very efficient and uh, I will uh, once again take you through on one of the case studies but this is the uh, Darbar Hall of uh, uh, Udaipur Palace uh, where we have uh, penetrated 48 inches uh, wall with this system and it is working now for last uh, 11 years uh, successfully. Uh, the larger air handling rates will always have challenges but what is now happening is uh, uh, to overcome these challenges uh, now mobile and wireless technologies are becoming very common in field of heritage building. The, today smart innovative solutions for historical building ranging from lighting to security to fire systems are easily available in the market. Uh, smart security integrates features like access control, CCTV, alarms, panic buttons into one easy use system. Uh, in recent decades, wireless sensor networks, we call it WSN and Internet of Things techniques are broadly utilized in cultural heritage protection oriented networks for, for monitoring the environment, security improvement issues. Uh, the wireless uh, sensor network uh, is a monitoring system comprises of radio equipped uh, uh, nodes linked to suitable sensors. Uh, these radio frequencies are now determined by government regulations but they are permitted and the sensors capable of monitoring crucial parameters like temperature, humidity, uh, machinery cracks, pouring rain and usual light for heritage building protection. So a lot of things can happen with these smart systems. Uh, a WSN comprises a set of intelligent nodes and each equipment uh, with a radio transmitter for wireless communication and ultra low power microcontroller for data reprocessing and flash memory to store the data. 
So the nodes automatically connect to each other through wireless links to enabling the distributed data processing and remote data transmission. On the fire side, the wireless fire devices have become very highly specified solution for heritage building, overcoming most of the challenges and pitfalls that these complex structures can prevent to fire system specifiers and installers. A wireless system can be installed in hours and, can, uh, and devices can be easily moved to or updated in future, allowing system to be expanded, modified or upgraded as building use uh, evolves and technology develops. There is no complexity and structural impact of running wiring loops for installers, less disruption of visitors' attraction, uh, reduced cost and less need for intervention in the historic fabric of the building. More and more these buildings are in operations in year round, so wireless is the best choice to de deliver an effective optimal uh, fire, fire system. We now, now have a smart lighting solutions available. The beauty of wireless lighting is that it uh, involves minimal installation, often utilizing existing sockets and uh, it is controlled remotely via smartphones or tablet. Uh, it does not require any concealed wiring. Also, the walls and ceilings of heritage building remain untouched and lighting can be positioned wherever necessary throughout the space. Wireless lighting also offers significant cost saving benefits, reducing wasted, wasted energy to by 50%. This advancement is going to happen further because there is a huge advancement happening in uh, uh, battery technology and LED lighting, which, uh, which means wireless systems can run for many years without even battery change. The passive technologies take uh, advantage of local environment to maximize the comfort while minimizing the energy use and uh, adverse impact. So the passive design principles should be developed and integrated with the current advanced technology to overcome the challenges. We have some fantastic examples uh, uh, which, uh, which India has. Uh, India's largest passive controlled building uh, is operational for the last 14 years with the energy consumption of one ninth. Uh, this, is, uh, this is something which uh, Ahmedabad has for Torrent Research Center. Uh, we do. We are working on a largest net positive campus of the country at Nalanda with the architect D.V. Doshi's office, and here we have also adopted several such technologies. So we have adopted modern technologies and blended with the traditional wisdom of architecture which we have learned in India. So here we are using all the aspects of modern technologies. Uh, friends, I was fortunate to work with this Fateh Prakash uh, Palace, uh, the Heritage Hotel at Udaipur. Uh, this is one of the most beautiful sites I have uh, done any project. Uh, we have been fortunate to get uh, global awards for this project because this was the first project in the world where we used uh, uh, digital uh, technology uh, in terms of ERVs uh, with a very innovative uh, uh, high velocity duct system. Uh, the Fateh Prakash. Uh, uh, so, this was the presentation which we had uh, done in detail. I don't want to get into it, but what we have tried to do is remove the, the current condensers which were lying in the veranda, uh, which was overlooking the uh, palace. You can see this uh, beautiful palace, which, has, uh, which, is, which is from the side of uh, Lake Palace. So this Fateh Prakash Palace Hotel has been certified as Best Heritage Hotel in Heritage Grand Category by the Department of Tourism. And what we have done here is we have taken out from those corridors which you see here uh, and taken the outdoor units to the other building. With the result, the owners could get six rooms overlooking the palace. And these are the best rooms of Udaipur, I personally feel. Uh, they have been fantastically done and entire advantage came because we could remove this uh, to 300 meter away from the current location and uh, we were fortunate to get some tunnels uh, which were connecting the, the two palaces and uh, this was very effectively uh, done here. Uh, this was the Darbar Hall again here. Uh, we did not touch the current uh, uh, old heritage structure and integrated a VRT system uh, along with uh, specially designed for this uh, architectural framework, uh, uh, special units which were 
probably nobody can even visualize where the unit is being located. So if this was all possible because of uh, good working with uh, architects. Uh, you can see here this was a corridor on which old condensers were lying and this, they were converted to a luxurious uh, uh, rooms there. Uh, this is how the piping was moved and we took the units uh, almost 300 meter away. <coughs> you can see here the two inches ducts were integrated with the architecture and uh, you can't see them. Uh, also the outdoor units uh, which are seen on the terrace uh, were beautifully covered. Uh, of course our entire opening sizes and everything was designed by us and uh, architect did respect that but you can't see those Condensing rate from anywhere, anywhere. So this was this was some something fantastic uh, application which we worked out. Uh, there there were many challenges in the kitchens. Uh, of course, uh, uh, these were resolved with uh, floor raising. But uh, this is one of one of the largest challenge which a uh, uh, building if it is not used for meant for that and particularly in heritage uh, uh, position, this can have a lot of challenges. So this, uh, this is a second job which, uh, uh, which I would like to showcase here. This is done in your city of uh, Jaipur. I was fortunate to work with uh, Amit Gelorji, he is architect here from Rambak. Uh, this is Rambak Palace. So Rambak Palace is most glorious uh, of palaces with its lobelet, splendor, extravagantly decorated hand of marble, <coughs> chalice, uh, sandstone, uh, uh, Bulastrates and polas and chhatris to complement the magnificent rooms and elaborate elaborate Mughal gardens. A fantastic uh, project is this, and uh, this is a banquet hall which is recently completed. You can see our air conditioning uh, grills are not conventional; they have been integrated with the uh, interior. Uh, and the services uh, was a big challenge here because. They were, they were not to be seen, so we have created a complete underground tunnel uh, to take all engineering services and at spots wherever services were required, we came up. Uh, this, is a, this is a beautiful tunnel work which has happened with uh, all smoke, ventilation and everything uh, taken care. Uh, and this is how you can see the structure because uh, the, nothing wants to be seen from the outside road. Uh, and uh, how uh, we have done the ducting uh, integration uh, is very interesting uh, because uh, we had very limited uh, space for ducting and the grills were very specific shapes. So you can see multiple levels of ducting happening there, uh, but it was very nicely integrated. And this is one of the most challenging job uh, which we have done in our life. And uh, the result is very, very heartening. And you can of course go and see this when you are here. There were large utilities which were taken care uh, in terms of uh, air conditioning plants, in terms of uh, our plant rooms. Um, all that integration happened. Uh, this is something which is just done. This hotel is just commercially starting uh, in the city of Jaipur. This is a Hat uh, Regency Hotel uh, which is just completed. And the beauty of this is of course blending of all your heritage uh, designs. Uh, and here again the services was very challenging because of the nature of work uh, which was demanded by interior designers and architects and the uh, higher chain. But you can see here again, uh, entire heritage uh, architecture was blended with, uh, with our uh, engineering services. So it, uh, this is just finished work, with one of the recent openings in Jaipur. Uh, you can see here, of course, we didn't get a tunnel here, but we used terraces. Uh, but it, you can't see any services anywhere from the uh, outside areas. So that is, uh, and it has big services because it is a pretty large size uh, air conditioning system. So friends, uh, I am here uh, in uh, Jaipur as Ashocham Jain Chairman. So Ashocham has taken a green initiative to take care of Mother Earth and to complement India's sustainability movement. And, to form, and they have formed this Council of Green and Eco-Friendly Movement, we call it CJ, uh, that executes uh, JAME Sustainability uh, Program. And uh, JAME has uh, five ratings uh, starting from uh, 0 to 105 above is our JAME uh, uh, file certification. We, we use a yard scale of 0 to 135. 
uh, and Jem is becoming very popular uh, because uh, it is uh, very uh, uh, reasonable uh, and our Jem certified building will give you a payback of maximum 3 to 4 years. Uh, we are now present uh, across the country and we have 2000 plus uh, professionals helping us uh, for this. Uh, I am very glad that Tashochan Jem Green Building Certificate Program has been uh, impaneled with Rajasthan Building Bylaws 2020 and free extra FAR incentives and green buildings are available. Uh, I am very, it is also heartening that Maharashtra government has also given uh, similar notification recently. Uh, also, Kerala has done this uh, fantastic work and uh, Ashuchan Jem Green Building Certification Program is now impaneled in the government of Kerala. Uh, also, Delhi government uh, uh, state level expert advisory committee is uh, uh, insisting for Ashuchan Jem. So, I think we are started getting uh, good recognition. I am very glad to put on records that uh, recently completed two new stations uh, at Habibgarh, which is now Rani Rupati uh, station and also uh, Ahmedabad Gandhinagar station uh, is certified by Jem 5. This is a luxurious hotel of standing above the Leela Hotel. Uh, there are many projects which have come forward. Uh, Sir is here, uh, his corridor at uh, Kartarpur Sahib is also gem certified. Uh, we are very glad that uh, we have now signed 93 MOUs with several universities and our dream and passion is that we should teach our architectural students uh, about sustainability. So, these are 93 uh, uh, institutes and universities with whom we are been working on James sustainability program. So friends, let's uh, please and create a green environmental sustainable country and take his uh, mission forward. And heritage is our legacy from the past and it is our responsibility to preserve it. Uh, I know MEP is a very challenging uh, subject for this. Uh, we heard uh, uh, many remarks uh, earlier, but I wish uh, this is uh, debated in much uh, bigger depth. Uh, this subject is uh, of Im immense importance if we want to preserve our uh, existing buildings. Thank you so much. So one question I had. Yes, sir. Uh, he is a very good teacher. You know, that's why, you know, uh, I always uh, listen to him uh, very, very consciously. And uh, he is a very pointer in uh, MEP, uh, very innovative. Thank you very much, sir, for your wonderful presentation. Sir, I am just very loudly thinking that uh, you know, when we talk about heritage, we talk about conservation, and uh, when we talk about building conservation, we still use uh, very consciously lime and sutki to retain the heritage and the con conserve the building. Can probably will look for MEP which was there at that time, and we practically uh, bring that back, like back, back, uh, bring back history into the heritage, and try to see that how the great palaces were functioning in a cool and comfortable position without any HVAC, without even I will say lighting arrangement, without many other things put together, but they were probably most sustainable palaces of the world. Yeah. Thank you for that excellent question. I think uh, you touched my heart. Uh, <laughs> basically, uh, th these all buildings are done say 400 years back, the way we lived then uh, and what we are doing today and the way we are living our life has changed. The lifestyle changes have brought this uh, uh, probably requirements of uh, change. You know, today, those days lights were not there and now the electricity is there. So how do we complement that? So I think engineering uh, systems uh, will be a need if, uh, because uh, the transformation of technology is going to flow to these buildings. Uh, we are not going to live the way we lived 400 years back. So I personally feel uh, we can't be going back to that level, but certainly uh, we should learn uh, and there is no denial about it. To me, sir, we have not documented and we have not done research uh, in terms of engineering uh, and understanding what is happening. I just uh, was telling you that how much energy is say flowing from uh, Taj Mahal, it can be digitally mapped today, but we have not done those efforts. We don't even know what thermal mass is created uh, which can give that effect. 
So there is no marriage which has happened between architecture and engineering. And uh, Yakin sir is here. He is from SEF. I have been telling uh, now Vimal also that this time has come that we start doing this. You know, our own projects, uh, uh, such wonderful buildings. Uh, if that orifice diameter of uh, Hava Mer, if we can map that and understand what is what velocity of air is giving what cooling. It, it can be now done, uh, but we have not done it. So, I think uh, I have also challenged our uh, ISHRE, which is Indian Society of Heating Refilting Engineers, and I have been requesting them that whatever work we do on technical side, if we are able to, in our generation, at least this this could be a five years project, but if we can do that, I can assure you and Jem can work with ISHRE and with uh, architects like uh, you, I saw many eminent architects. I think this is something which we must do. And if we are able to document that engineering, we should be teaching world why should an architect from US come and tell us what net zero building should be and how it should be designed. It is our health legacy. I think we, we should be ashamed if somebody comes from US and tells us uh, what is that. Or I must tell you, sir, I think, sir, when this project was the Will this work? Uh, because uh, he told me very one simple thing, Nimit sir. I am talking about Nimit ji. He is no more with us. We lost him in COVID, but he has done some fantastic work in this part of the uh, country. And when he was designing this torrent uh, building, research building, I was quite young. I still remember 20, 28 years back. Uh, and. Uh, he said, Pankaj, the client is appointing a consultant from UK uh, to design this uh, and he's shown me the sketches. So do you think it will work? He's giving him more fees than what he's paying to architect. That was his pain also. So the moment I saw that, I told him it is going to work. So he said, how did you tell me in one second? I told him, sir, I was when I was a kid, I was traveling to Mando many times and in Mando we have this uh, Rani Rupati Mahal, where when, the, when we used to take our guests there, the guide will take us to terrace level and he will put one drum of water into the courtyard that uh, the kind of a pond it was. It had sand, sandstone uh, below it. And you believe it, within half an hour when we will go down, after listening to his stories, there will be air draft, beautiful air draft. And that used to happen because it had a double wall. Uh, which was extended about 6 meter, but the story guide will tell us that you know the Rani Rukmati was so beautiful that King didn't want anybody to be seen from outside. So she, he had made those walls, but they were acting as a dra draft. They were taking the draft up. The courtyard with the stone sandstone was uh, giving the air with a higher density uh, moisture and uh, the breeze used to be getting created. And this is exactly what we were doing there in uh, Torrent with a high mist system, we were creating a mist in the courtyard and we had those uh, towers which you saw and those were uh, taking the draft up. So I think uh, this is how I think, uh, but we, how many second or third building have come after that? Yeah. This is done 14, 15 years, I, I, I feel bad that nothing has come after that. So I think we should have got many more buildings uh, if it was working and I have done work now, recently I did about 6, pro, six uh, lakh build areas in this building and I see that uh, uh, the system that does work with this 45 degree you are able to maintain 32 degree without any additional power.